Hi, I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. Lovely to chat to you today. Maybe you could begin with a brief introduction and tell us a bit about your film. Um, I'm Luna Carmoon and I am the director and writer of Hold. And I guess it's simply a tale of when the past comes to play and that grief really doesn't heal over time. It just disguises and travels itself back to you in shimmers and triggers. And tell us a bit about the backstory. What was the inspiration and, and why did you want to tell it on the big screen? I mean, I never intended it to be on the screen. It was a story that, uh, a 20 page story that I was going to write and leave at the bottom of my bed and people to find when I kicked the bucket. And yeah, so I didn't intend for it to be on screen, but uh, you know, sadness turns to venom, venom transforms into, you know, needing to write it and then you know, this, then it, I had translated it to script. And um, I guess it's just a universal tale, like what's more universal than love and grief? It's something we all experience and it comes to play with us. And, you know, it's about a girl really suffering attacks of the past when she least expects it. And um, yeah. And tell us about your cast. How did you choose them? And, and how did you work with them to achieve your vision? Um, so, uh, just like my shorts, I did a mixture of open castings um, and tapes and just regular, like, you know, agency castings. And I worked with Heather Baston, who's worked on both my shorts, and she's a wonderful casting director. And we really found some gems. And my lead, Sarah Lightfoot Leon, this is her, you know, debut lead, and she's amazing as Maria and we found her little mini me Lily Bo Leech in the same week and they are just spellbinding to watch and then Joseph Quinn um, who's also a lead in place Michael basically just sent him the script and I'd loved watching him a lot of British TV I didn't know he was going to blow up and um, yeah he's amazing and they're both spectacular. And in terms of the look and feel of the film, how would you characterise your style? And do you take cues from, from other filmmakers or films? Or have you just sort of developed your own style? Yeah, I mean, uh, I love British film from the 70s and the 60s. Nick Rogue, Joseph Losey, Jack Clayton, um, and then Big Daddy, Ken Russell. I absolutely adore Ken Russell. And I love the hysteria and beauty of his films. Um, Someone like Jerzy Skolomowski, like Deep End, like very much the movies from that time. I Start Counting, um, a lot of the BBC, uh, BFI flip side movies really inspire me. I do just love 60s, 70s British cinema and definitely in terms of colours and line delivery and absurdity, definitely is like an ode to some of them films. And in terms of the shoot, maybe you can tell us a bit about some of the highlights, but also the challenges you encountered along the way. Oh, highlights. Um, so many. I mean, I just had such a wonderful cast and crew and we became a family. We all, we all ate together and just, you know, just meshed and we had splits and splits can be quite challenging because you're shooting a lot of the night. And I think if we didn't have such a lovely crew that didn't sort of synchronise in getting loopy and giddy and silly together, it could have been really hard. And they just made everything just full of such love. And so, you know, even the hardships are really beautiful of my casting crew. And what do you hope people will take away from watching the film? I mean, a lot of young girls are going to come see it for Joe. Um, and he's spectacular in it. He's really just gives such a performance that, you know, of male actors of that time from them films like Alan Bates or Oliver Reed, like he really embodies them kinds of men from that time and the world that I'm from. And I hope that these girls and women will come and see it and then just actually be, find a sense of femalehood and womanhood and actually be drawn to a lot of the female relationships and friendships in my film because that's all we really have as women and it's really special. And what does it mean to you to have your film here as part of London Film Festival? I mean, it feels really special to have my film here. It's where I began my journey with my two shorts, Nosebleed and Shag Band. The BFI and LFF have supported me. I was on BFI Network. That programme changed my life. I met my producer who worked on this film and it's actually my favourite programme I've ever been on. Um, and I look back on it on such fondness because I met so many great contemporaries who are also making their features now. And we have like our own little community and little lovely networks. So, yeah, it's absurd and it's really special and I can't wait to watch loads of other people's films.
yeah, watching the lineup presented this morning, it just feels such an exciting time for cinema, but particularly for, for British cinema. I mean, how do you feel the health of the industry is and what might be some of the other films you're, you're really burning to see? I mean, yeah, it feels really exciting that like maybe British cinema is perhaps heading back to its roots of like the 17 and 80s where we had genre binding. I mean, I feel like cinema was way more progressive like back then in terms of, you know, the, like how stories were being told. They were more fantastical and genre bending. And I feel like we definitely are heading back into that direction, which I feel like we've lost. We lost for quite a while. We became very like, I feel like one palette, like two palette kind of films that are being made in this country. So it's really beautiful to see, you know, the films on the screen today that are British and just feel like they have like such flavour, such vibrancy and yeah, it's going to be really exciting to watch them films. Can, can you think of one that particularly stands out? It's hard to say. Too many. Oh my God, there's so many films. Like, I, I really want to see The Scarlet Dock. I think that'll be fabulous. I wish we had a dirty, naughty, disgusting, feral cinema like that still where people were smoking fags and just all sorts of going on. Um, even though I don't like even people eating crisps in the cinema, like that winds me up, but I would love a feral cinema. So I'll be watching that with, the, with a fondness of wishing we had a cinema like that. Um, in terms of other British films playing, Daniel Kaluuya's sci-fi looks really good. Like, I would definitely be watching that. I love sort of off-expired like dystopian sci-fis, and we don't really have that in this country, so that looks really great. And how do you see, you know, the opportunities now for a diversity of filmmakers? I mean, yeah, looking at the lineup, it looks great, but sometimes it can feel like, particularly getting the bigger budgets, you're not seeing, you know, enough of a diversity of filmmakers, and particularly for female filmmakers. Or do you think we're in a good place? No, I think that there's always room for improvement. I think this country has a, you know, a lot of improvement in terms of like, you know, filmmakers and opportunities are scarce and schemes are scarce. And I'm really such an anomaly. I'm very lucky that I was on a scheme created by Creative England and um, Sky Arts called Short Flicks, which searched for underrepresented talent in the UK, people who didn't have degrees, qualifications, and to open the door for you to get into the industry and get my first short funded and I don't know if that still exists anymore and that was just one scheme so no it is scarce opportunities are scarce and you can only hope that more schemes like that will begin to be birthed again because they are really needed they are lifelines for people to get into the industry but not just to get into the industry there needs to be a sustainable way of making sure people can keep them doors ajar and people aren't working multiple jobs while they're making, you know, working their way to their features like I did, you know. And, and it's only through having a diversity of storytellers that you get different stories being told, and particularly when it comes to the female experience, perhaps as you're talking about in your film. Yeah, I mean, there's always been female filmmakers and there's so many that I adore, um, you know, since the 30s, but it's just whether or not they get the platform to really be seen, be programmed and curated and that they weren't and now so many films are being rediscovered and remastered by female filmmakers um, and God forbid I hope they still do start to discover and some of this work because so much of it has died in the celluloid that you know we really start to see these stories that also got left behind as well as the new ones that should be you know continuously being told and searched for. Amazing, well thank you so much for sharing that, that was amazing. <laughs>